Hi boys and girls! Our story this week is called From Seed to Plant by Gail Gibbons. Gail Gibbons was a very curious child. Her parents say that she always asked a lot of questions. She also loved to draw and paint. One of her first jobs was doing artwork for a children's television show. After that, she wrote her first book. Since then, she has written more than 135 informational books. She loves her job because she still likes to ask questions. She finds the answers and then writes about them in her books. This book is, uh, this story is going to be an informational text. That means that it's going to give us facts about a topic. So it's going to tell us some facts about planting seeds and them growing into plants. We're going to use the pictures, the labels, all the facts and details in the writing and the diagrams that we see to help learn more about the topic. And this ties in very nicely to our science unit on plants that we just finished up. Um, so, you know, you should remember some of this stuff from when we did it in science. From Seed to Plant by Gail Gibbons. Most plants make seeds. A seed contains the beginning of a new plant. Seeds are different shapes, sizes, and colors. All seeds grow into the same kind of plant that made them. Many plants grow flowers. Flowers are where most seeds begin. And you can take a look at the picture. It shows different kinds of plants. So the tulip will make seeds that grow more tulips. And the daisy will make seeds that grow more daisies. And the corn will grow more seeds, uh, will make seeds that grow more corn. A flower is made up of many parts. We're going to take a look at that diagram. And we can tell that at the bottom of the pistil, there are tiny egg cells called ovules. In the center of the flower, there's a pistil. The sticky part at the top of the pistil is the stigma. And then there are stamen, which is the part of the flower around the pistil. And then the stamen make yellow powder called pollen. Before a seed can begin to grow, a grain of pollen from the stamen must land on the stigma at the top of the pistil of a flower like itself. This is called pollination. Pollination happens in different ways. Often wind blows pollen from flower to flower. Bees, other insects, and hummingbirds help pollinate too. While they visit flowers for their sweet juice called nectar, pollen rubs onto their bodies. Then they carry the pollen to another flower where it comes off onto its pistil. If a pollen grain from a flower lands on the pistil of the same kind of flower, it grows a long tube through the pistil into an ovule. This is the beginning of a seed. The seeds grow inside of the flower even as the flower begins to die. As the seeds become bigger, a fruit or pod grows around them. The fruit or pod protects the seeds. When the fruit or pod ripens, it breaks open. The seeds are ready to become new plants. Some seeds fall to the ground around the base of the plant where they will grow. Some pods or fruits open and the seeds pop out. Sometimes when birds eat berries, they drop the seeds. Other seeds fall into streams, ponds, rivers, or the ocean. There they travel on the water until they stick to dirt along a shore. The wind scatters seeds. Some seeds have fluff on them that lands uh, that lets them float to the ground like tiny parachutes. Others have wings that spin as they fall. Animals help scatter seeds too. They hide acorns and nuts in the ground. Some seeds have hooks that stick to the fur of animals or people's clothes. Later, they drop off onto the ground. A flower bed or vegetable garden is beautiful. Seeds are planted to grow in the gardens. The seeds come in small envelopes or boxes. Directions explain how to plant the seeds and care for the plants. The beginning of a plant is curled up inside each seed. Food is stored inside the seed too. The seed has a seed coat on the outside to protect it. A seed will not sprout until certain things happen. First, it must be on or in the soil. Then it needs rain to soak the seed and soften its seed coat. 
When the sun shines and warms the ground, the seed coat breaks open and the seed begins to grow. This is called germination. A root grows down into the soil. The root takes in water and minerals from the soil for food. Up grows a shoot. Green leaves grow up from the shoot towards the sun. The plant grows bigger and bigger. The leaves make food for the plant from the water and minerals in the soil, the sunlight, and the air all around the plant. Okay, take a look at the diagrams on those pages. We see a bean up at the top and that has the food part of it and the beginning of the little plant that you see there and the seed coat is the hard part around the outside. And then we can see in the other upper picture germination happening. That's when the little plant first starts to break out of the seed and the roots start to grow. And then we learned in science that that plant is going to need those leaves to make food. Finally, the plant is full grown. Buds on the plant open into flowers where new seeds will grow. Many of the foods people eat are seeds, fruits, and pods. They are full of nutrition, vitamins, and minerals, and they are tasty, too. Okay, that's the end of our story. You can take a look on page 362. There's a From Seed to Plant project. You can do that at home if your parents happen to have some potting soil and some seeds. If you don't have seeds, you don't need to go to the store and buy them. You can actually take seeds out of an apple you're eating, or if your mom or dad has lemons at home, um, or pears. Some grapes have seeds. We did put our avocado uh, seed at school. Remember the pit? We put it in water. Um, that's a little different. That seed grows better starting in water and then moving it to soil. So we started that in water. Um, but you can go ahead and try the From Seed to Plant project if you happen to have the materials at home for it. We may do that at school when we return, depending on how late in the school year it is, because the seeds do take time to grow. All right. Please don't forget to practice reading your story to two people this week. I love you, and I'll see you soon.